Hi, I'm Cynthia Schiller. Please like and subscribe where we help and heal one day at a time. So your narcissist needs you, but you're not in their life. Um, but they still need you. And this is where uh it gets kind of odd is um they they love that push pull dynamic so even if they've moved on even if they're with a new supply they still have a need for you as long as they feel that they can still control you um they and, and get supply from you they need you um they want you in their life from a distance because when you're at a distance um you're you're crying or feeding their ego or saying you know it was just so wonderful like you're such a great person and and i just wish we were together because i really love you and on and on all these these things that we say to them so they can keep us off in the distance like that's great yeah i am pretty awesome and oh you you're crying like crazy today and and they feed off of that um but that's where the hoover comes in um let's say they broke up with the new supply they'll come right back to you even if you're crying um but if they're with the new supply things are going okay with that um they're gonna hoover you when you stop giving them attention and pay attention to that um when you start moving on with your life when you start bettering yourself you start healing that's when they come back and it's kind of like if they really loved you um they would have uh tried to to calm your tears or try to understand you or communicate with you instead of letting you go all this time in pain um they're feeding off of your pain um and like i said they need you in their life but it seems like they they, they want nothing to do with me but they do because um you see, uh, sometimes it's purposeful where they'll post all these pictures of the new supply and how happy they are. Um, they, they feed off of us uh, either being jealous or depressed that we're not with them, that they're giving something to somebody else. Um, and it's a really odd dynamic on how they still need us in their life. Um, and that's when the Hoover will come in is when you stop um, reaching out to them, that they want to make sure that that supply is still there it's it's on the shelf um but they want to make sure that they didn't lose it because one day they might need it and it's also like a trophy like you know uh, an ego stroke like all these people are um hoping to be with me and they do feel loss if if we go away uh sometimes that's where they'll rage or get angry um or sometimes they'll, they'll shut us out because they don't want to deal with it's not the loss of a person they don't want to deal with the loss of a supply so um each different narcissist is different so it's hard to predict on uh, if the hoover is coming um when does the final discard happen when they don't get enough supply off of it or they do have more supply and it's abundant um and they feel confident and it's usually not just the new supply it's everything that goes with the new supply the friends the um i don't know co-workers everything um to where they think they're safe in that area to get enough adoration but um they don't want to let us go they don't want to keep us but they don't want to let us go um because uh like my ex my gosh i was stupid but i cried for like i don't know uh months upon months upon months or years sometimes like we have this rocky thing and it's like you know uh they can let you cry and go through all this stuff for months on end and then come back like nothing's happened as soon as you are like okay i, I gotta stop i gotta move on um they'll come back into your life and then we think it's because they cared about us but we gotta look at the big picture like did they really care about us like there was not one time you could have reached out and said hey relax don't worry about it or, or you know even if they said you know i've moved on they don't acknowledge what they did you know, often they don't won't tell us that they have moved on uh so we're still kind of thinking you know are, are we working this out is it over we don't have the closure they purposely don't do the closure because if and i used to always watch soap operas and it was so odd where you're like just say it just say it it's like those cliffhangers like just just communicate with each other and I used to get kind of frustrated watching those soap operas because it's like this could be so easy um but those cliffhangers that keep you uh involved and and, and wanting to to find out what happens and and you show up the next day to watch the soap opera and, and and it kind of sucks you in um same with narcissistic relationships if they give you closure 
you know, it's just like watching uh, a soap opera where they're like, oh, this, that, and, and end of story. It's like, oh, like, I know it all now. Like, you know, and that's another thing too. Uh, with narcissists, um, we tell them everything. Uh, we don't give them a chance to kind of miss us because we've been so trauma bonded that it's hard to back off because we think we're in this normal relationship um, to where we should be able to say, hey, you know, uh, I called you two days ago. Are you still, uh, you know, available to like, are, you, are we still talking? Um, and uh, they use those cliffhangers. Uh, they leave it to entrap us. Um, and when we communicate with them, um, they they use that against us they don't relate to the pain that we are telling them they uh hear that uh they pick up on the emotions and that's the fuel uh, our, our our uh fuel is if we're excited and uh, adoring them they'll, they'll spend time with us but if we're like uh down and out um that's when you're pushed aside but they'll 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 feed off of that energy. Um, they need energy somewhere, and in order to get us back up to the happy energy, um, we need to be acknowledged, or we need to talk to them, or, or you know have our feelings validated. Um, so they don't know how to do it. So that's why those uh, ghosting and all that kind of silent treatment can last quite a while, um, just because they just don't want to help us get back to the the happy. So they they need fuel from either way. Um, so as long as things are good, they'll stick around. Uh, but when things need attention um, to, to redirect things, um, they'll, they'll still keep us. So here they're going to spend time with us. Here they won't. And they don't want to let go either way. And it gets really tricky because, uh, you know, to, to have a relationship with a narcissist, you have to snap out of whatever you are feeling uh, if it's negative. Um, but that's not a way to live um, because that's frustrating. It, it, it builds up, uh, starts to like boil inside us. Like, wh why can't we just get an answer? You know, but it, it's trauma bonding us just like in, in, in those soap operas where it trauma bonds you in a sense to, to show up, to be curious, to think about it or um, have different scenarios running through your head. Like what's going to happen? Or I hope this doesn't happen. Um, and all that extra energy we're giving through our, our thoughts is us investing. Um, you know, it's not necessarily investing money or investing, um, you know, cleaning the house or cooking or picking the kids up or buying them a new outfit. Um, but we're investing time. And time is one of the most valuable things that we have. So as you go through your life, remember, you only live once. And all these years that I have wasted, um, and how much pain I have gone through, what I could have accomplished without moping around the house or, you know, um, just feeling sluggish and, and the brain fog. Um, we don't only have one life and what we are investing um, is in the wrong thing because there is really no solution unless we, uh, like I said in a manifestation video where you can manifest a good relationship with a narcissist if you manifest bullshit. Um, like to manifest something, you pretend everything's great, you live in the end, um, and just picture you know exactly what you want. Um, and you live your life like you have that, and it kind of comes to you. And in a sense, it can rebalance the way you talk. You're not talking needy, you're not talking uh, negative, um, but it's a facade. You know, uh, so if I was to like deal with my ex, you know, it, it would be like uh, pretending we're married and we have just this beautiful family and great house and this and that. And it's like, I, I can live my life that way, but that, there's no way that's fulfilling. And, and what you live your whole life to see if it comes to fruition, um, it may never. So no matter how much you believe it, um, you're not going to know for sure. Uh, until years down the road. So to live in an altered state um, is not healthy. It's, it's avoiding your needs to have a facade. So we got to remember that the narcissist built a facade. And that's what everything fell apart. Um, because there were some uh, glimpses of reality. So in manifesting something, um, that's like 
kind of next to impossible because you're dealing with somebody else. It's not like you manifest, uh, you know, I'm going to be a doc doctor and, I, and, and you make sure that you live in a town where you can go to the university and you make sure that you um, study what you need to study and, and get sleep so you can test out a thing or pass your test. Um, but when you deal with other people, um, you know, just believing something uh, is not healthy. Um, so we get lost in this. How, how do we handle this situation? Um, there's no cure for MPD. Uh, the narcissists almost never change. If they do change, their heart and their mind doesn't change. Their actions might. But then we're living in a false reality anyways. You know, um, we're snuggled up to somebody who now helps us clean. Okay, so, so we got that taken care of. They're going to do 50-50 with us for, on, on chores. But we're snuggled up to somebody who doesn't really care. So it can seem like it's going to go along good for a while until, you know, maybe a health issue happens to where we do need them. We're, we're unable to do things on our own. We're unable to um, live this uh, fake reality of having the he healthy, happy uh, future because life happened and we're needing something. And that's when they're going to resent us. And um, that would be really, really sad to go through your whole life. Um, and then in your end days, to just be discarded in your end days, um, to where you look back on your life, like what, what did I invest in all that time? Um, so try not to uh, invest too much mental energy into your uh, ex, your narcissist. Uh, hopefully they're your ex. Um, and let your brain start to uh, heal um, because, you know, to keep your mind sharp. Uh, they say crossword puzzles are good. Reading's good. Trying new things um, because we can keep our brain healthy or we can damage our brain. And by ruminating and, and um, being stressed about what did we do wrong and the guilt and the sadness and the depression and um, the fact that now we're not sleeping or eating right because we're so consumed that um, invest in yourself, invest in yourself and start minimizing. Uh, eventually uh, it's going to get easier. Um, you have to purposefully change your thought processes. You have to. Um, I know sometimes they just pop in. There's things that uh, remind us of our ex to where it's hard to refocus that. Um, but there are different techniques. Um, you know, they have that little rubber band, snap it, um, different little things that you can do. Um, but try to stay active. Um, have, have your uh, life busy so your brain's not so busy. And just enjoy life. You're, it's it's going to lead and open up doors. Uh, the more you get out there, the more you do things. Um, it's going to give better conversation where you're like, I just tried this. Um, it was so much fun. It gives you things to talk about as opposed to, you know, if you and I just met up and uh, we're like, yeah, it was a great day. I did nothing yesterday and tomorrow I'm going to do nothing. And um, I don't even watch TV anymore because it irritates me. And as opposed to this, is, I went horseback riding for the first time or, or, or talking about something and, and, and feeling that invigoration and, and happiness because happiness is contagious, just like depression is contagious. Um, be the person that attracts and infects people with your happiness because uh, that's what people are drawn to. Just like I said with the narcissist, when things go wrong, um, they still want the energy, but they don't want to be around us. So same with other people. Um, try to be the happiest you can be. Fake it till you make it. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. It does get better. Have a good day.